Hi, hello, I'm IXS, I'll be your herald angel for today, and we have a service announcement. On Friday, that is tomorrow, the talk We Launch Bits of Freedom, which is supposed to be here, will take place in the Two Envelopes tent at 1600, and the Tempest for the Casual Election Hacker is at the Monty High Alt. So please keep that in mind if you're interested in these two talks. Thanks. And now it will be a real pleasure for me to announce Leslie Devan from MIT. She's here to talk about a uh, cyclotron to generate particle beams, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Thanks, so please give me a hand of applause for Leslie. Hello, uh, my name's Leslie, as said before, and just to introduce myself briefly, I'm right now a grad student in nuclear engineering. Is the audio having problems? Oh yeah, that's a lot of audio. Louder? Louder? Wait, like this? Okay, I'm sorry, all right. So this cyclotron work is based on research I did as an undergrad for an undergrad thesis project in nuclear engineering in spring of 2007. And well, so this will be telling you how to design and build a two MeV cyclotron thereabouts. So to start at the very beginning, uh, well, no. So the way this is being organized, we're going to start with development and applications of cyclotrons and just generally what they are. Then going for about 10 minutes or so into the necessary physics governing equations. And then we'll be spending the rest of the time on component design. So talking about the vacuum chamber, electrodes, the RF system, impedance matching, and particle generation and detecting the particles. So now, just starting very basically, talking about what a cyclotron is. So it accelerates charged particles. Those are things like electrons, protons, or heavier ions using uh, an electric field. So it has two electrodes, accelerates the charged particles across that field. And they have to be charged particles because you're accelerating them using an electric field. So if they were neutral, that field wouldn't do anything to them. And furthermore, there's a magnetic field in place, completely separate from the electric field, that confines them to a spiral flight path. And this is important because the spiral flight path means that it's more efficient than a linear accelerator. So I guess I don't have a board, but um, so imagine you have a linear accelerator, some protons at this end, voltage applied here, the, pro the protons are accelerated across this gap just once. So you need a very, very high voltage gap or a long distance or both to get very highly accelerated particles. But in the cyclotron, like you saw on the previous side, it's a spiral path, so it encounters the same accelerating electric field many times. So these typically generate energies on the order of one to five to maybe 10 mega electron volts generally around one to five. The entire system is inside a vacuum chamber. We're gonna be talking more later about why the vacuum chambers are especially important. And just brief line of historical background, uh, first developed in the 1930s, there's a picture on the right there of the first cyclotron uh, developed by Livermore. 
just for particle physics experiments. Now they're used uh, for medium intensity radiation sources and starting stages for larger accelerators. So something like this, the type of cyclotron that I'm talking about today would be useful for a high school level, undergrad college level uh, physics lab type thing. Now, just an introduction to this before we start going into the physics equations. This is the vacuum chamber of the cyclotron that I built, and they're the numbered ports on the side coming off. There's the RF system, which has the impedance matching, port one, then a vacuum pump to maintain the low pressure. Uh, ports three and four relate to the ion source. You have the electrodes for that and then also a hydrogen stream, that's for generating the protons, there'll be more on that later. And then five up there is a target to collect the accelerated particles. So the physics, and this part, um, it's simple physics, but I'm not sure what level physics people are familiar with. So if I say QV cross B is the force, how many people are down with that? Just show of hands. Okay, cool, that's reasonable. So um, if people are, more interested in uh, learning the sort of electricity and magnetism you need to understand this. It's fairly simple level stuff, even, even for the cyclotron, but one of the best books is Purcell's Electricity and Magnetism. Uh, it is classic, it's dear to my heart, it should be dear to your hearts as well. So just a bit more on the QV cross B here. So these are, if you have a charged particle that's moving at a non-zero velocity inside a magnetic field, there's a force that acts on this. And that force is given by Q, which is the charge in Coulombs, times the velocity, that quantity, which is a vector, crossed with B, which is the magnetic field. And the cross product there, uh, Bear with me for a bit, this will be useful and good. So the cross product there, it's not just a simple multiplication, but it takes into account the vectors 